live. All right, cool. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Gabriel Santos from gfsantos.com. And if you remember, uh, a couple weeks ago, I had Mr. Shandy Goins on the podcast, the, the, I don't know if it was the first or second official podcast that I had, but we have him here again today. Um, a, a lot of, a number of people, you know, really like that video. And so today we have a very special topic, but before we get into that, um, just so you guys know, I met Shandi uh, during my life coach training certification program through IPEC. And he was one of the people that immediately uh, caught my attention just because, well, first of all, he's wearing this, this freaking uh, LA Laker champions uh, uh, letterman jacket and <laughs> black, black dude in the room. And he's like super loud and he has like one of the most energy out there. So I'm like, okay, who's this guy, right? And uh, long story short, you know, he's one of the, the coaches in the program, one of the people in the program who... Um, I've kept I've kept close and connected to and, and we vibe really well and, and we work together on a number of different things and um, he has a fantastic story um, but I'm gonna go ahead and let Shawnee just kind of share who he is real quick uh, and Shawnee mentioned like you know you know going from homeless to now where you are at with 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 professional level and academics and then and then I'll just go ahead and share right now with the audience that you know the title of today's video is we're gonna talk about you know both of our experiences with addiction, um, our, our journeys and our overcoming. And ultimately that for those watching, um, you get a sense that you're not alone and that, uh, to learn from our experience, what to expect and, and that what you're going through is normal. And then ultimately for you to make whatever shift you need to make so that you're no longer addicted to a substance or an activity and that you're freed up to really, actualize your potential yes so with that mr shiny goins here you go well thank you gabe appreciate you my brother and yes my name is shandy goins and prior to getting started in business for myself as a transformational coach i actually was addicted to uh chemical substances drugs alcohol you name it i i pretty much did it um I was 20, uh, 23 years old and I was, uh, I got kicked out of the military because I couldn't stop drinking. And um, I was embarrassed and I lost my career very early on and I had to move back into my parents' house and I was depressed and I didn't feel like a winner, felt very suicidal. And um, one day I made a decision that I, that, you know, I felt that I was more and uh, in two, late 2001, I, I went into recovery I got clean and sober, and I went on this long journey of, of personal development, which actually allowed me to uh, become a transformational coach, speaker, trainer. And yeah, if if there's anything that I can that I can say to help you uh, get clean and sober, if you know if I can reach one, that's the, that's the, that's the start. Mm -hmm. Got it. No, for sure. And and I I don't I might have not heard it, but uh, if you didn't say it, so Sean used to be homeless and, and like he was in the Navy, correct? Um, and then things kind of went south with the substance abuse. And now not only is he, how, how many, how long have you been clean, so to speak? Well, over a year and a half. So I, I was clean for, I was clean for a decade. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my mother, my mother uh, passed away in 2014 and, I just really couldn't deal with what had transpired because she died and died of cancer and I fell off the wagon, you know, and uh, this gentleman right here, it was the one that actually really helped me get back on the, on the wagon. So I'm very blessed to have um, a year and a half clean and I'm back on track with my life and fulfilled with my family. Yeah, no. Yeah. Fantastic. And um, you know, that really speaks to your resiliency and you know, that even, you know, like when we go through stuff, we're, we're prone to, to use things to help to aid us, you know, Absolutely. and, and personally, like, I don't see anything wrong with what happened. Obviously there were consequences to those actions, but you know, you were, you were doing the best you could with what was happening. And, and it was, you know, you, you know, I can't even imagine what, what it's, what it's like when, when, you know, your, your, one of your parents passes away. So um, just glad that you're here, bro. I'm glad that, 
that you are proud of the life that you're living. And, you know, so, so Shandi is, is a, one of the all-star college recruiters um, in the nation. And he is also in the middle of grad school. And so, you know, he is a, a living testimonial of someone who went from homeless and addicted to multiple drugs to now someone who inspires people who has 10 years of excellence at his, at his professional career and just finished his own book and is, is just about to start his, I don't know, it should, can, is it okay if I mention this? Oh um, yeah, go for it. Okay, yeah. Uh, and you can speak to that a little bit in a second, but you know, he, he's, he's making moves, he's making moves. And, and um, that's the whole point here. Um, you know, and he's just, he's going to get his master's soon. So um, if you, if you're looking for credibility and reputation in terms of why the heck should you listen to this guy? And that's why. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, any anything coming up for you right off the bat? If not, I can I can open up a a, a, a topic. No, man, you're 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 good. You're you're good. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get really deep in, into this because we really want to save a lot of lives. We really really do. So let's start with this. What do you feel is the number one thing that people who are addicted to, whether it's alcohol or addiction? Why is it that, what separates the people that, that get control and move forward in their life and the people who stay addicted? Gotcha. Well, one of, one of the first things that I, that I learned when I was in recovery was this right here. You only get addicted to any chemical substance unless you like it. If you like it, you're, you potentially are about to go down the rabbit hole. You're going to go, you're going to potentially go down the dark side. There's a lot of variables that goes with being addicted to chemical substance. Um, one of, one of the big ones is, is genetic. You know, if, if, if you have one parent that isn't, that's addicted to drugs and alcohol, you're 25% screwed. If both parents are, you're 50% liable to become addicted to drugs and alcohol, right? Um, not to say it'll, it, it will always happen. There are a few uh, children that'll say, you know what? My dad is always drunk. He doesn't look like, that doesn't look fun. I'm not going to do that. There are people, there are children like that grow up and says, yo, my, my, my parents were drunks, drug addicts, and that wasn't me. Um, there, there's also, you know, there, there goes with being a habitual creature and what a habitual creature is, is someone who, you know, let's just say like, if I get a hold of ice cream for the first time and if I love ice cream, I'm going to eat a lot of ice cream over the years. Mm -hmm. And so people, a lot of people don't realize, you know, the things that really go into addiction before you actually start doing the drug, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If you are a habitual creature, if you take ecstasy for the first time and you love how it made you feel and that whole atmosphere and environment, trust me, you may end up potentially becoming addicted. I will say this here. If you don't ever want to be addicted to any chemical substance, do not try it for the first time. It's not the 1,000th time you drink. It's not the 1,000th time that you picked up and smoked meth or crack or whatever your vices is. It's that first one that gets you. Mm -hmm. I got it. No, I, I get it. And, and um, you know, addiction is an interesting thing. It's an interesting phenomenon. I, I couldn't attest to the genetics part of it. Um, I do agree that if, if there's a household of addicted people, that it, it will tend to breed uh, people who are addicted just because there's, there's a culture of addiction in the house. Mm -hmm. um, and I definitely, I will say this, like, at least for me, there are certain activities where, like, I know where, you know, I'll try it. And not even drugs, but like, say there's like a really fucking good cookie out there. Yeah, <laughs> I'll try. It, I'll try it, and like, I'll because because I don't I don't know if this is if this is a thing, but I feel like I'm a very like I like stimulants. 
Yes. Like, 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 I don't, yes. I, I don't care if it's, if it's the internet or if it's a cookie or if it's video games or right. if it's social media or if it's marijuana or alcohol, like, or if it's fucking a protein drink. Sure. Like, if it, if it like makes me feel something by doing it, like, I like that. Like, right. like, I like it. And so like, I kind of have, I won't call it a weakness. And that's one thing I want to talk about in a second is like the power of language. Right. I won't call it a weakness, but I definitely have, there's this part of me that like, if I just stop caring about mm -hmm. consequences, mm -hmm. oh, I I'm just going to go after every single stimulant ever. Like, like, yeah. da -da 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 -da. um, and, and so, yeah, you know, actually, and even the word addiction is a powerful one. Yes, it is. You know, um, cause like, eh, eh. And we're now, we're just in the kind of in the flow of conversation now and feel free to, 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 to chime in or redirect however you want. But, mm -hmm. you know, when it came to my marijuana addiction, I self-diagnosed myself as addicted. <laughs> no one told me that. Like, right. it was almost like, I, you know, I think a, a part of addiction is definitely like the shame and, and the, the judgment. Mm -hmm. uh, like I shouldn't be doing this. This mm -hmm. is wrong. I shouldn't be doing this. And mm -hmm. and in that, like, you never, you know, because you just make something that you like wrong. Right. And in one of the chapters of of my book, and for those who are watching, I have a book on Amazon. It's called uh, uh, Marijuana Mindfulness. One of the chapters I put is um, uh, coming out the closet. Colon. Mm -hmm. I I love weed, and I'm I'm proud to say it. Yeah, because the feeling really is like that I was hiding how much I loved it, you know, and, and I never fully expressed how much I loved it mm -hmm. um, and that I would make it wrong for loving it like it was a sin. Mm -hmm. um, and so once I once, especially in front of my father, when I shared with him, like, hey, dad, like, I love weed. Like, I like it. I legit like it. I I that was me essentially standing up for myself and just you know i can't hide this anymore and once i had that conversation with him and realized that he wasn't going to disown me that i was like wow that relieved a lot of my guilt and shame um and from there i was able to see more objectively like oh fuck like if it's okay to smoke weed now i can look at it more objectively like how is this really affecting my life right you know and, and um in a similar way so and, okay, so I will say this. Marijuana for me was definitely a security blanket. Sure. Um, and I didn't know I, I I didn't know how to create a life I really loved without using weed to kind of fake how much I love my life, you know? Mm -hmm. Um and so that's really what weed brought me at that time. And I don't know if you, I don't think I ever shared this with you because it's not really a, a popping story, but I used to eat so many pizza rolls. Like, <laughs> it, dude, like it, it went from, this is like a classic, like, like, tell me, tell me if this sounds familiar to an addiction, addiction cycle. Like I started out with just six, mm -hmm. the recommended six, mm -hmm. right? Ate them all. Then it became 10 at a time. Then it became 20 at a time. Then it became the whole 50 pack at a time. But here's the thing. I never felt like I was addicted, like I'm wrong. And it got to a point where I saw like, oh my God, I'm eating so many of these. I get chubby. Right. And I told my mom, I was like, mom, don't get these for him anymore because I, they just make me chubby. <laughs> and that was it. That was it. There was no more like, I need to have a pizza roll. Like, like, right. And what's different when people, you're deep in addiction is, there's this need that the that the stimulant fulfills on mm -hmm. that like even though you recognize that i'm spending a little too much money on it or maybe i'm not getting productive anymore that goes out the window and and whatever pain the marijuana or the alcohol solves it's like you just you don't know how to find it another way so you just you just have to go for it right so pizza rolls never did that for me <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, but, you know, and I can't speak for everybody else because there, there are people out there that, that love food and, you know, their food is, food is their, is their addiction. You know, they're not smoking, they're not drinking, they eat, right? <laughs> um, and, then, you know, again, everybody has their own vices, right? 
But one thing that I will touch on that you said a little earlier was the guilt, right? And yes, because there is so much guilt because subconsciously you know that, man, I shouldn't be out there smoking crack. You know, I'm taking money, I'm taking money out of my mama's purse. If you're working, I'm getting paid and I know I'm supposed to pay the rent, but I, I, I just, I'm a, I, again, I'm going to just have one and right. one turns into 10. And before you know it, you, you, you blew a thousand bucks, right? right. Um, and one thing that I love about 12 steps is when you come in, they already know you're, you, they already know you are jacked up on the inside. You feel guilty as shit. Yeah. And, 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 and they'll, they'll come in and say, brother, welcome. We love you. It's going to be all good. And what happens is, is a group of people will love on you so much. It's, 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 it's like you can use their love until you get to a point where you start to finally love yourself and you start going through that process of first and foremost, learning to forgive yourself. And that's probably one of the most difficult things somebody that's in recovery, whether you're doing 12 steps, if you're doing, doing it holistically, is forgiving yourself. The other part is, is making that decision to apologize to people that you hurt and harm when you was in your addiction. Mm. But I will tell you, when you really begin to heal yourself emotionally, psychologically, is when you do that work to get clean. And then you begin to ask for forgiveness from the people that you may have harmed throughout your addiction. Not everyone is going to be cool in the beginning. And there may be people that's like, they'll never forgive you. And that's fine. But by you taking the opportunity to apologize and says, yo, I'm sorry I did this and that, most of the time people will forgive you. There are times where you have done dirt. Let me just be honest. There are times where you may have done some dirt. And it may not be conducive for you to go to that person physically and say, I'm sorry, say I'm sorry. But what you can do is write a letter to them and say you're sorry. And put that letter, throw the letter in the fireplace and let it burn. Because what ha what's happening is, is you're healing yourself. You can't, you can't change what happened in the past. You cannot. But what you can do is focus on today. Mm -hmm. You gotta focus on tomorrow. But just focus on today. You know what I mean? Yeah. And just from personal experience and being a substance abuse counselor for uh, what, four years, yeah. seeing the lives change, yeah. right? As they say in recovery, it does get better. Mm -hmm. it, it does get better, truly. No, I, I hear that. And I really like what you said there because really, so ideally, like, you know, whoever you may have hurt, you get forgiveness but what's what's equally as important if not more so is that like you get to forgive yourself and you can release whatever hurting energy there is for you about something mm -hmm. um, no i totally get that i totally get that um yeah i had some other topic i wanted to bring up but i kind of i kind of forgot well, we'll come back to you <laughs> no worries. actually so yeah, so actually, okay, here, here it is. So if you, yeah, if you could just kind of share, not kind of, if you could share like to an audience so, so that the people who are going through alcohol uh, addiction can relate and pe for people especially that have never gone through it so they can understand. Mm -hmm. What was it like for you to be addicted to alcohol? Like explain what that felt like. Gotcha. And let me just tell you straight up, some of the most strongest people, strong will, have fallen to addiction. And you may say, why? I will tell you what happened with me. So my, my entire family, on my mother's side, I never knew my biological father, but I do know that on their side, I mean, alcohol was big. When I was growing up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin in the 1980s, Alcohol was like Kool-Aid to me. You, you know, every, it was around me 24-7. Wow. As I got older and began to realize, you know, started to recognize what's going on in the world, I realized my mother had, she was an alcoholic. Mm. And I realized that um, her long-term boyfriend was a cocaine addict. 
Mm. And, you know, if you hang around somebody long enough, you're going to get that haircut. Well, she started using cocaine because he was using it, right? Mm -hmm. I saw what drugs did to my family. I saw what it did to my mother. And I, and I vowed, I says, I will never drink, let it no smoke ever again. Mm. And at that time, when you never cross that path, you never know, you, you have no idea how cunning, baffling, and powerful addiction is. Not at all. When I was 16, I was a freshman in high school, and I was in Milwaukee. And my friends, they, they, they drunk like coors. And my mother was in recovery. She was cleaning up her life. And I wanted to prove something to everybody in the world that this, this, this liquid, this, this, this liquid, it's just all these people are addicted in the world. What the hell is this all about? And I'm going to prove to the world that I'm the drink and I'm in control of myself. And I did that. I drank six beers my first time drinking. I had no idea that those genes, it was like, how the hell you drinking six beers and you didn't get drunk? And from there, I said, I told you I got it. I told you I got it. And I didn't drink anymore until my sophomore year. Your environment plays a huge role in your, in, in your drug and alcohol use because when I, got, became, when I became a sophomore, everybody was drinking, right? Friends were drinking, the girls were drinking. One thing that I noticed when I was in high school, my sophomore year, I saw the girls drinking. They got a little bit more relaxed and you know, <laughs> they probably got freaky. And I was like, oh, yeah. they started drinking. They want to have some fun. And so what I did was I put I, I partake in, in the event. I didn't drink, I didn't drink a lot. I would take it act like I'm drinking a lot, but I'm just really controlling the quantity. Yeah. And I just want to be a part of that crowd because I was trying to get girls and have fun. Um, little did I know though that I started to hang around people that was drinking all the time. And remember, I had that self-confidence and that strong will that I can handle this. Yeah. And so it went from being a, a test for me to I'm doing it now to have fun. Does this sound familiar to any of you guys? Right. I'm doing it for fun. But here's the thing. You start drinking. You, you keep drinking. You keep drinking, right? It's releasing the dopamine in your brain. That's that chemical that, that gives you pleasure, right? And what happens is through time, the act of drinking becomes more fun than, than regular things in life, right? So the stage one of, of addiction is I'm drinking because it's fun, right? Through time, your body de develops a tolerance. And when you're not drinking, you're going withdraw through withdrawals. You may not notice yet, but you're going through withdrawal period. Then it goes into stage two. You know, me and Gabriel, we're at my mother's house. My mother embarrassing me in front of Gabe or, or my father. I storm out the house. Me and Gabe, I'm like, man, let's go. Embarrass me. They treat me like a little kid. I'm 17 years old. I'm almost grown. And let's go get, man, let's go get drunk, right? Now, was I having fun when I was at my house? No. I... I got embarrassed. So now I'm pissed off. I'm depressed. So now what's going to help me um, ease my pain? Booze. Right. So now I'm drinking for pleasure. And now I'm drinking for to get over shit in life, right? Right, right, right. And then the third stage is you really start to realize like, yo, if I don't drink, I can't function. So it goes from being recreational to... I need this to now I'm sick right. physically, emotionally, psychologically, and you just got to have it. And that's the cycle of addiction, my friends. Right. hundred percent. No, that, that definitely is, is part of what it looks like. And um, one second, I'm going to, I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab something real quick. Sure. Um, um, yeah. So, you know, what I, what I noticed, so <laughs> going back to what you said, the environment, right? So just right. like you, 
um, I made similar promises where it's like, you know, I, I'm not, I, I associated a drinking, partying and smoking and even like sex with like burnout behavior. Right. Um, and really like failure. And so I, I made it bad right away. Mm-hmm. There was an immediate association between that stuff and not being successful. Right. So I didn't, I didn't party. I didn't do any of that stuff until but i did hang out with a stoner crowd and i always felt kind of left out um because when you get to high school what's cool is you know what gets praised is not being smart what gets praised by your peers is being cool and and drinking and partying and getting chicks and so i didn't get any right. of that. um uh, but so luckily i had my head on straight enough to 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 get good enough grades so that i got admitted to a really good university but, you know, I always kind of yearned for that popularity feeling that mm-hmm. was gone. And, and so prom night after party, I made the decision, like, I'm going to smoke some weed. And, <laughs> and, you know, what's funny is, like, I didn't want to look stupid. And so I research- I did some fucking research, bro. I'm like, all right, how do you hit a bomb? Like, how do you do this? Right? Well, yeah, I, like, yeah. I literally, I literally right. looked up. And so, you know, like, like, that's just kind of a testament to who I am. And anyway, so I get to this party. And my first fucking party ever, bro. And, you know, like, my friends are probably like, oh, my God, Santos is going to smoke with us. Like, and all throughout the years, they're like, bro, if you ever smoke weed, you got to smoke with us. Of course. Right? Yep, yep, and, yep. And so, like, now it's this thing. And I tell them, like, oh, my God, Santos is going to smoke, dude. Go away. What are we going to do? Da, da, da. And so it's this whole little thing. And, and I get to the party. And I hadn't done any drugs yet. And all of a sudden like oh my god santos is here like what the hell like da, 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 da. i'm immediately feeling the sense of significance and recognition that wasn't there even love right wasn't there before right and, and what i learned so i actually had some fear about parties is like you know is it gonna be weird can i handle it like can i handle this you know emotional sure. honestly sure. i got there and i made the immediate immediate connection like like two things one like oh Parting isn't a big deal. Like people just get fucked up. Like that right. that's all they do, right? Right, right. The second right. thing is like, wow, like I could do this and this is how I'm gonna make friends. Uh-huh. You know, so like literally to kind of fast forward the story, I smoked that night and you know, the high itself in hindsight, it wasn't even that good, bro. I had like I had like a, a three minute giggle fit. <laughs> and then and then and then I had the craziest cotton mouth. Right. And then I was extremely paranoid, like scared out of my mind, like, like scared that the cops were going to come, scared (laughs) that I was going to get busted. And then like, just like, you know, I had never been that having that altered state of mind before. Right. I was kind of freaking out. I was like, when does this end? Like, when does this end? You know? Right. (laughs) Um, But what dominated over that sense of pain from the, the high was the pleasure of being recognized and 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 having a a a way to connect with my peers who i had never had a connection and top of that the anxiety that i would feel socially at the time because i was very insecure Mm -hmm. went away due to the drug yep so all of a sudden i'm like right right (laughs) long story short it wasn't long before I remember telling my sister, she's like, hey, sis, I smoke weed, but it's not going to be a thing. Like, I'm not even going to buy any. Don't trip, right? Right. Within a month, I have my, you know, and it's exciting, bro. Like, like, it's exciting. It's like, oh, my God, I want to be high and try every single thing because it's like a whole new world. Of course, yeah. You know, cause, and in a beautiful way, it is, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so it wasn't long before I had my own stash box and I had my first pipe and <laughs> I, hit, I hit up one of the stoner kids at school. Like, hey, man, can you help me get some weed, right? Like. And, and, you know, it opened up this whole world for me that wasn't there before. And in fact, in college, that's exactly what I did. I, I made all of my social connections through partying. Mm-hmm. All of them. All of yes. them. Um, and, and my priorities shifted. It went from, I just, I want to be cool. I want to party. And grades can be secondary. Like, whatever. Right? Yeah. Um, and so, uh, uh, to, to conclude that story, like, Mm-hmm. I started finding myself as uh, hanging out with the bro in a, both a beautiful way and like 
a trippy, scary way. Like I hung out with people that I would have never hung out with before. Oh yeah. And what I would say, like probably the epitome of like, whoa, like I shouldn't be here. Okay. And uh, a, a friend of mine at the time, he's the one who I would buy weed from. And he also dealt with some harder drugs. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and I was at this guy's house. And, bro, like, I'm one of the most innocent people you'll ever meet. Sure. I mean, and at least not, not to be cocky about it, but, like, I, you know, I'm just saying, like, I'm pretty fucking innocent, you know? Right. But I found myself in this situation where I'm in the house with these guys, <clears throat> and, like, there's fucking cash over there. There's this guy fucking, like, like rolling up bags of weed over here. My friend is fucking doing coke over here. And I'm like, I'm like, why am I here? Mm -hmm. like, why am I here? Like, how did mm -hmm. I get here? You know, mm -hmm. you know. But, anyways, <laughs> it's 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 that rabbit hole, man. I I, I get it. I, I mean, you know, you know, we you go by much on this. Oh, go for it, dude. Shoot, handle your business. I'm like, uh, I'm listening. <laughs> um, you know. Dr you know, drugs, drugs can, the, the typical drugs, you know, we're, we're talking cigarettes. Cigarettes is a chemical substance. It's a, it's a stimulant. You know, you start smoking cigarettes, you know, and then you start drinking or vice versa. Uh, I mean, you, when you do the two, it's, it's a good combination, right? And for those who drink and smoke, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You fire up a new pork, you know, and, and, some, and some, some booze, you're good, right? But then... You know, if you're, again, if you're a habitual creature, right? And if you are, you know, really intoxicated to where your inhibition is low, right? You, you can be uh, susceptible to trying harder core drugs, you know? For example, uh, just like Gabe was talking about, you know, I started with alcohol, right? Then it led to, oh, if the Chicago, the Chicago Bulls win the 1996 NBA Finals against the Sonics, I'm going to smoke me a black and mild for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I found myself smoking that cigar, and I got a headache, and I said, I'll never do that again. Little did I know that that, that strong effect of that chemical substance, and next thing you know, that summer and, and my senior year, I was, I was smoking on black and miles, and I was smoking – BDs and and then cigarettes and you know first time I smoked marijuana I actually went to damn jail so <laughs> I went to jail on Mother's Day yeah. uh, smoking the marijuana I had just turned eighteen and that turned out to be a, a, a disaster but wow. you you know when you're when you're in that when you're in that life. Even if you quit for a while, if you reach if if you reach a point where you're you may be addicted and you don't know it, there's always a chance that you may go back to it. So what do I mean by that? So because I actually got in trouble with the law, I had to be straight edge. Like they was like, if you sneeze wrong, you're going to spend a, a a year in San Quentin, right? Mm -hmm. And about eight months later, I haven't had any drink, I haven't smoked. And I wasn't a smoker. I wasn't a marijuana smoker, but I drank, and I was like, oh, my God, it felt good. And then I, I was really chill, right? But then my senior oh, – I'm sorry. Two years after I was with my first love, we broke up, and all I felt was pain. Um, and then, like Gabe was talking about, you know, your environment. So all my homies, the little, the, the younger homies that was doing, they were now doing the same thing that I was doing a few years back, and I'm OG now to them, and they're like, oh, we got you away from such and such, and now you can kick it, and next thing I know, I'm going back to parties, I'm drinking, you know, I'm having a good time, and then one day, I came across an individual that offered me something that I never had. I know people that have it before, but I thought it was very harmless uh -huh. because it came in, in a little pill form. Uh -huh. And that little pill was ecstasy. Uh -huh. I went to my rave for the first time in 1998. 
And I remember my friend who gave it to me, who brought me to my first rave. I was like, what is this little pill going to do for me? Can we get some 211? Let me get some 211. I'm going to be good. I'm, I never went to a rave before. I know ravers, but I'm like, this is not my crowd. Mm -hmm. And I took that hit of ecstasy. And let me just tell you something. I hit that ecstasy, and I loved it. Mm -hmm. I loved it more than graduating high school. At that time, that was the biggest accomplishment of my life. I loved it. I fell in love with it. I fell so in love. My habitual self had three. And if you talk to anybody who uses ecstasy, if you take three your first time, boy, you crazy. You crazy. And for a good, I, I had a three-year career with, 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 with ecstasy. I went to raves and been around crazy people. You know, that was my new lifestyle. Yeah. It also was a gateway to the worst drug you can ever have, which is methamphetamine. I was coming off of ecstasy, and it was there, and I was like, let me try that. Yeah. I've tried that before. They was like, don't do it, don't do it. I know what I'm doing. Let me try that. Yeah. And next thing I know, there goes another addiction going down the rabbit hole, you know. So when you go down that rabbit hole, again, where did it start? I didn't wake up and say, I'm going to be an ETAR. I didn't wake up and say I was going to be addicted to methamphetamines. I didn't grow up and say I was going to be homeless. Where did it start? It started with that one damn Coors line I had when I was 16 years old, right? And, and, and so, you know, th there's nothing wrong with being straight edge. There's nothing wrong with not trying it. There, there's nothing wrong with blazing your own path and, 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 and learning to, to enjoy life. You don't need the, the chemical substance. If you are someone that's currently using and you're having, you're, you're having fun, I get it. Let me just tell you to this day, ecstasy was fun. Using drugs was fun. I'm, I'm telling you no lie. I think a, the reason why a lot of people stay clean and sober because they don't hide the fact that that shit was fun. Mm -hmm. That's going to raves and feeling good and feeling lovely. That shit was fun. But I know I can't do that no more. Why I can't put it no more? I lose my kids. I lose my lady. I lose my career. I lose everything. I lose my belongings. I lose my money, my business. I'll be homeless. If I went back to if I went back to meth, I'll be homeless in six months. How do I know? Because that's what happened to me. <laughs> when I had relapsed, I had relapsed once before. I have four, I have I have a few years clean. And I damn near lost everything. My mother told me, she says, if you, if you don't get your shit together, I'm gonna take Isaiah away from you. And I was like, no, you will not, not my son. And so I, you know, I was good for you know a decade. Mm -hmm. um, but you will always, when you get off, you're, you're, it's always gonna be there. They call it the dragon. And if you're not doing whatever it takes to stay clean and sober, your addiction is doing push-ups. It's getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Because addiction is the brain, it's addiction of, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a disease of the brain, right? You release so much dopamine over the years with the, with the booze and the, and, the, and the drugs, it never forgets that excitement. The only way you can return back to osmosis, if you were using it for 14 years, it'll take you 14 years to, to feel balanced again. Which means you like, Shani, I don't have 14 damn years. Well, let me just tell you this here. However you decide to get clean, whether it's holistic, whether it's 12 steps, whatever, you got to work your ass off to stay clean and sober. But it's one day at a time, guys. It's one day at a time. And remember this, we're not promised for tomorrow anyway. Tomorrow's not promised to anyone. So just focus on today, on your, on your, on your uh, new life. And, and you ain't got to do this shit by yourself. Get some help, man. Get some help. This man right here, this dude saved my life. You know, and he didn't, he didn't say go to 12 step. He didn't say, you know, uh, 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 he didn't say the traditional things that I've heard. And I'm not saying 12 step don't work. 12 step does work. But I, I was at a time, I was in a place in my life, I was like, I don't want to do that 12 step shit no more. I want to do it. And he was like, dude, I know you could find a way, but I did seek the help. I, I had to. This man stayed in contact with me that whole year. And other people stayed in contact with me and, and held me accountable. But it was it was out of love. 
And, um, and I, I found the reason, the true important things in my life that I didn't want to lose, right? Um, and so, you know, if you're out there, just know there are so many resources you can tap into, but you, you have to come to a point where you like, I'm done. I'm done. When you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, that's when it says, yo, I'm done and I'm ready. I'm ready to live a new life. And I'm going to tell you straight up, when that day come, that day come, that would be one of the best decisions you ever make in your life, if not the best decision. Because on the other end of addiction, when you live clean and sober, you can have whatever you lie, you lie. <laughs> no, that's, a, that's a beautiful uh, story. and. You know, what I, what I want to be clear on is that, you know, what Shandi went through is, you know, very, very serious in terms of the impact. And, and um, the message that I share when it comes to addiction, I can't speak on alcohol addiction. Um, I cannot speak on alcohol because I didn't go through that. Um, but I will say that the, the, so the reason why people want to stay clean is because they're aware of a history of use that when they do it even once it like turns into a year turns into two years and mm -hmm. then start downward spiraling and the one of the winning strategies is to just stop doing it mm -hmm. because that's one of the clear-cut ways to know that you won't go ever back down that path right and, and so i i support that strategy for, for, for those that find that it works and it meets their needs. And that's a strategy that works for a lot of people. What, um, and I validate that, that winning strategy. What I want to be clear on is that for me, the winning strategy, you know, because what's, what's more important than being able to say that you're sober is that your life, you actually love your life. Yes, that you're there for the pe you are there for the people and the relationships that matter most, including the one with yourself. Yes, because because what I didn't realize is that you know because with weed especially like who am I hurting? Like at worst, I'm getting fat and I'm not doing anything right. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, when I on all those times when I chose to stay home and smoke weed and get high instead of go do this or that what potentially happened was missed opportunities where I could have changed someone's life or my life could have been changed. And so that's very unseen impact, but that is what's happening, right? Right. If I keep smoking weed, I'm not hiking up Mount Whitney. If I keep smoking weed, Shawnee potentially never gets the help that he was looking for. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? So like there are waves, there are waves out here, you know? And, but what I want to be clear on is because, you know, the, the, quitting quitting forever that strategy never worked for me personally right um and 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 so i want to be clear that there are many different strategies in terms of getting rid of your addictive use and having your life be beautiful and transformative mm -hmm. um, and that in itself drinking alcohol isn't wrong smoking weed isn't wrong even doing meth isn't wrong. And what I mean by that, not to support meth, right? But, but in terms of a morality sense, like, is it wrong if a rat does meth? Is it wrong if a rat, no. Like, like, but there is impact to use. And I think what people are missing is when you, especially with what seems to be, I, I, and I'm not, a, I'm not an expert per se. Like I didn't go through, like I didn't do all the research, but, um, I, I feel that, and, and here's the thing, I know for meth, like I've never done meth, but I get the sense that like meth has this quality where like it, you become addicted. Like it's straight up, like it's not even like, you could be fucked, like, like that shit is so strong where you're like, oh fuck, you know? And I will say this, I, I would say that there's a people who maybe they have a predisposition where the way meth works for a lot of people, like alcohol works on that them that way too where it's like oh fuck like it just hits these needs like it hits these needs um and what made all the difference for me was you know two things a i'm not a bad boy for liking weed and b there is a consequence to the way weed is used 
Mm -hmm. Right. And so I, I guess what I'm trying to say here is that like, I want to be clear that like, if you're someone who drinks alcohol and you don't, if there is, if clearly there's no impact on your work life and you don't feel any kind of negativity from yourself and that's true, then like, you know, for cool, like, like I'm like happy as fuck for you. And, 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 and I'm glad that you don't, you don't have to experience what me and Shandi experience with this whole, like, Oh my God, I, I don't, I feel like I have no control. Um, Cause yeah, you know, and so I'm just glad. And same thing goes with weed. Same thing goes with like, you know, on the one hand, I'm not saying like, yeah, you should all go do these things. But on the other hand, like you're not a bad person for trying it. Um, but just like Shawnee said, like, I think what is important, like, like be very clear on what you're going to do if you ever try stuff and you need to have a support system right away. Like, like, mm -hmm. Like, because what I realized is like, when I tried weed, I didn't have, no one was teaching me response. No, I, there was, I had no teachings of responsible weed use. There wasn't a culture that's like, you know, cause like if you had a culture of people who drank, but they did it responsibly and they were fine young men and women and they were clear on the negative consequences, but at the same time they valued drinking together as a group once a month. You get what I'm saying? Like, like, like it's such a, it can be such a culture thing. And I didn't have any rules. I had no rules when I tried weed. What was the rule? Uh, do whatever. It's fine. <laughs> like, like it's cool, you know? And, and what I had to learn and really do is, is train myself to, to follow rules and be honest to myself. Like, um, and, and I will say this, that just like, just like Shandi said, there, and it, it much has less to do with weed and alcohol and more so to do with, with you where, where if you get triggered and it's a similar trigger that you used to go to weed or alcohol for that was the addictive way you would use it, mm -hmm. that's still there. Like, like that potential to use weed and alcohol the same way you used to where, it, where your life just downward spiraled into a mess, that is there. Right. And it, and, but at the same time, I will say, and this is, I, this is where it gets kind of dicey because the last thing I want to do is, is have someone go astray from their path. But I personally think, because my whole thing is like, well, well let me just be more straightforward. Like I train myself to, to do what I say I'm going to do. That goes for going to the gym that goes for waking up at a certain time, that goes for meeting Shandi at 6 p.m., that goes for not smoking weed, that goes for smoking weed, that goes for alcohol, that goes for not alcohol. And what happens with addiction is that you're so not, you so don't do what you're going to say. You know, you don't, you don't say, you don't do what you say. Mm -hmm. For a million times, you're like, I'm not going to drink today. And then you drink today. Right. I'm not going to smoke today. And then you smoke today. I'm only going to smoke one. You smoke six. Mm -hmm. So there develops. And, and what happens is because there's this just party that like, I don't know, you let it loose and then you don't harness that thing. And then all of a sudden it has full control. It, 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 you know, so it's like I train myself to trust myself that when I say, despite how I feel, and I'll tell you this, guys, like when I was in the middle, in the pits of addiction, the thoughts of like, bro, we just need to do it. Like, what's the big deal? It's no big deal. What's the big deal, right? And so I do it. And even to this day, like if I smoke once, on the second day and even the third day, uh, not smoking, but I'll smoke one day and then the day after, I'll still have those thoughts and even those emotions like, bro, what's the big deal? But I've trained myself. I know that that's not really what I'm committed to. I know that at my core. And it's, it's, it's a, like, I like, it's funny. Like you never would think that, that like, you know how in the, in the success path, like you have to fail a lot in order to succeed. Right. right? Like I failed a lot in terms of having self-control before I was able to really like have real self-control. And so like, I know exactly what to expect. Like I know exactly what to expect. I'm like, the thoughts are going to be there. The emotions are going to be low. I'm going to want to buy shit. Right. And it's not <laughs> like that, but I just know, like, I just know ahead of time. Right. I've had enough experience of success of 
saying, I'm only going to do this once and I do it once, or I'm not going to do this at all. And I don't do it at all. Like it's, it's just, you know, integrity, bro, like integrity. Um, but not all of that to say, like, what's more important than all of that is that you have control over your life. You have control over your life. And the center of your life is not a substance and that you, you are, you are like if, and this is important for me and I, and I, and I'm true to this, like, and I couldn't say this a year ago, if weed dropped from the face of this planet, I would still love the shit out of my life and nothing would change. Mm -hmm. Nothing would change, not a single thing. And I, I would still be fulfilled every day. I would still be, you know, like, I wouldn't be sad. At, I mean, would I be sad? Maybe for, like, a second. Like, that sucks. Like, if Disneyland went out of business, I'd be like, fuck, that sucks, right? Mm -hmm. but, like, but, like, the quality of my life wouldn't, it wouldn't change, like, in any real way, you know? So, um, and, I, and I guess to answer a question that might come up for people, like, how did that, how did that, how did I do that? How did I go from, it, 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 what, what changed? Like, what changed? Um my sense of happiness and purpose went from being high to being me essentially in like the corniest way possible. Mm -hmm. Like, like what the center of my life these days is making sure that I am in integrity and that I'm there for people and that I'm sharing my message really that that's what gets me off, bro. Like these podcasts, they get me off. The coaching sessions I had today, those shit, that shit gets me off, bro. Like, like exercising, that shit gets me off. Like, um, and I think one thing I, I really, 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 really want for people, especially those, those going through marijuana addiction, is to no longer be, have that voice of addiction and judgment in your head and your soul anymore. Because that shit fucking sucks. That conversation of like, bro, we should stop. Uh, let's just do it once. Uh, why do we do it? Uh, but I need it. Uh, like, like, uh, but we should just stop like for years and years. Like, Oh, Oh God. That was the worst. Right. That was the worst. And uh, you know, to, to your point, you know, you actually have the ability to, to really stop on your own. Right. Um, one of the things that I like to let people know is there, there's research, there's verifiable, verifiable research that well over 60% of people that are incarcerated, they got incarcerated because the crime they committed, they were on some type of substance, mm. some, some type of chemical substance, right? And I want to let people know out there, right? You have to be very careful of your actions when you're under the influence mm. because you don't have all your faculties. You know, like, yeah, again, you got people that's, that have, they're, they're, you know, they're using meth, they're using cocaine, you know, they're using psychedelics. When they're under the influence, they have no self-control, literally, and they're committing, they're doing things and harming others and themselves. And it's not that they really mean to, but it's that chemical substance that take over their life. And so, you know, there, there's a certain thing that we call know thyself. Like straight up, if you know that you've been addicted to something for a long time and you know that you've been trying to quit on your own, but it's not working, self-coach yourself. Like literally self-coach yourself and say, you know, has my best thinking helped me to get clean and sober? And if the answer is no, here's another empowering question. What would my life look like if I asked for help? Mm. You know what I mean? Yes. And, and the, you know, and the thing about it too is when you get clean, the hardest part, the reason why most people relapse is two things is they want to get around their old environment because they want to show to the, to the homies and to the drinking buddies that, hey man, I got four years, I got four, four months cleaning sober, I'm good, I'm good, right? Right, right. And 
what's going to happen is this. You start getting around those people, you're going to relapse again. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. I actually agree. You know, if you, because here's the thing. You stop drinking, you stop smoking, and you stay clean and sober long enough, you're going to start to realize something. You really don't have anything in common with your old homies. Mm -hmm. You really don't. It's like they're drinking, they're smoking, they're taking pills, and you're not. You are fucking up their high. You know what I'm saying? You no. are fucking up their high because you have become a square to them, right? And so in order, like, like Gabe and myself, we didn't become coaches on our own. We became coaches and, and trainers and speakers because we started hanging around coaches, trainers, and speakers. I didn't get into the corporate world until I started hanging with corporate people, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to get off that, if you want to stop, you need to start getting around people that you strive to be, people that you, you dream of, of becoming, the person you want to become. Get around those people. Also, too, know your triggers. You know what I'm saying? Know your triggers. If you know you go down that block, you're going to meet that person or that environment. You know you that could potentially get, get you high. You don't need to go down that block no more. You know that if you go to that liquor store that you're probably going to drink, you probably don't want to go to that liquor store no more. You probably, you probably need some support. Matter of fact, why are you going to a liquor store? Why don't you go to a grocery store and don't go down the liquor aisle? I'm serious. No, I'm not saying forevermore that that has to, you have to be running, but you got to know your triggers. And, and through time, when you get some cleanness over time, you can actually get to a point to where, you know, you can be around people like my mother. My mother died 20 years cleanness over. My, my father died, I believe, uh, 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 10 years cleanness over because he got, he passed away, unfortunately, at a young age. But my mother would not hang around my grandmother. She would go see her, my grandmother, her mother, and she, she'd get ghosts because my grandmother was drinking actively. She didn't want to be around the environment. But she got to a point in her recovery that she can, if the family drinking, they said, Carmen, is it body? No, it's, it's cool. Because she know her triggers and she de developed enough self-control, right, self-will. It wasn't bothered because she like, I'm not doing that today because I'm not trying to go back into the streets of West Logan and be smoking crack, right? But in that beginning, you really need to know your triggers because that's what, that's what you call relapse prevention. Mm -hmm. And like I said before, there is nothing like having support. Mm -hmm. Do, the reason why most people fail in life, this is a platinum nugget for you, is because they are afraid to ask for help. It's not about being weak. It's not about uh, being, you don't have the willpower to help yourself. Do you know some of the most successful people in the world ask for help? Do you think Bill Gates built Microsoft all by himself? Do you think Steve Jobs built Apple all by himself? Do you think that the, the, the president of this university can bring in all of these students by himself? The answer is no. So my friends, if you, if you feel that you, if you have a problem, and if you know that you know that you know that you don't ha have within you to stop, and you want to you want to get out that damn you want to get out get out that rabbit hole, ask for help. Mm -hmm. Ask for help. There's so many different ways of people that are getting clean and sober. Twelve step is one of them. You got meditation. You got the holistic approach, right? So many different ways with the internet. Guess what, my friends? You can Google it. <laughs> How do I stop using drugs? Google it. How do I stop drinking? Google it. Right. You know, there's so many different resources to help you get clean and sober, my friends. And I really wish that for you. Um, I really, I love you guys. I want you guys to succeed. I promise you. On the other side of the party world, Life is, so, uh, as life is so much better and the party is so much greater because I don't have to worry about running from the police no more. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about being broke no more. I can actually keep my money. Mm -hmm. I, I can go by the police and say, how you doing, officer? And not trip like shit, man. I hope, man, let me, oh, wow, let me, ooh, let me hide this. and No, because I'm a productive member of society now. 
Mm-hmm. You know, and, and all these great things will come when you cross that line, my friend. Uh, you know, when I first got, when I first made the decision that I was not gonna, that I was gonna get off the streets and I didn't want to be on drugs and alcohol no more, I had a vision that I could help a lot of people in the world. I had no idea how that was gonna happen. But the law of attraction says this here. If you have a vision for your life, right? And if you take incremental steps on how to turn that vision into a reality, my friends, I promise you, success will leave clues. I promise you. I never was, I never knew a millionaire in my life, never. But I knew a friend who knew a millionaire and because they knew that I was striving for for upward mobility in my life for my family, guess what? I got mentored by that millionaire, right? And now I'm working with six-figure earners, multi-millionaires, some of the top people in the world, you know? And and, and that's, I made a decision that I didn't want that fucking life no more. I made a decision, I, I wanted to quit being dead in life. Right. And so that's, hey, that's our nuggets. I love you. I hope if something that we said resonated with you and just know you're not alone and just know my friends, it's okay. Yeah. You can get help from there. Thank you. hundred percent. Yeah. We'll, we'll start wrapping up and, and just to, uh, to, to, to go off of what Shawnee said, like I, cause Shawnee said I did it alone. I didn't do it alone. Like I, I, I was constantly trying to figure this out. And I like, if I didn't read all the books I read, there's no way I, I get to the place where I'm at. If I didn't go to all the seminars I went to with Tony Robbins and Landmark and even IPEC, there's no way, like, I didn't do it alone. Did, did you know, did I hire, uh, I even hired, a, I saw a drug counselor. I had my own coach who I still work with today. He specialized with people who, who have addictions. And so I didn't do it alone. There's no fucking way I'm doing it alone. Okay. So, so you know so don't get it twisted like <laughs> especially with addiction like doing it alone and i i second with what he said with the environment and the people when i was hanging out when i was in a fraternity full of stoners and i tried to quit there was weed everywhere and trust me like not all of those guys were addicted to weed and so you had you had a mix of casual stoners and like addicted stoners who didn't even right. know addicted Right. And, and you have me and and it makes a difference like like they say if you hang out with five millionaires you'll become the six if you hang out with five stars you'll become the six and trust me we recruited a lot of members who had never smoked weed before in their life and by yeah. the time they graduated they were full-on stoners yeah so so it does make a difference and it can be hard to make new friends and to make that decision but um it's your life that's at stake and when you die the only people that are going to care is you like mm. at the end of the day. So uh, not to say people won't love you, but my point is, is like, it's your fucking life. Yes. It's your life. And um, if you need, if you have any questions for Shondi, um, I'd like to leave Shondi your email and like your Instagram or however you prefer to be contacted in the description. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you could, I'm putting, uh, is that okay with you? Yeah, sure, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you can email me at info at shondigoins.com. So that's I N F O at S H A U N D I G O I N S dot com. Yeah. You can also reach me on my website, it's www.johncmaxwellgroup.com forward slash S Goins. So that is J O H N. We'll have the link in the description, Shondi. We'll have the link. In the yeah, description. it'll be. Yeah, it'll be. Well, uh, I'll, I'll actually, go ahead, go ahead and spell it out in case they're listening and for whatever reason they can't find it. Go ahead and spell it out. Yeah, J O H N um, C M A X W E L L Group G R O U P dot com forward slash S G O I N S. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So there's Shawnee's information. And if you have, if you guys have any questions or comments, or I like to actually know what your guys' opinion on anything we said today down below. Um, I know, you know, I, <laughs> I actually think addiction is a pretty polarizing topic. And so I'm interested to know just what people's opinions are, what they agree with, what they disagree with. 
their experience, something that they learned, really anything. Um, and yeah, and, and if you guys really like this conversation, leave a thumbs up and um, share the video. Let us know what you think. And um, we'll uh, see you another time. Take care, guys. Right, guys. Have a good one. Peace out.